Hi everybody, Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping an EFT so you can eliminate self-sabotage and take the action that you want. Today we are continuing on our Healing Fundamental series, where I'm teaching you bit by bit things that will make your tapping more effective. There's a way that you can actually shortcut the process that kind of fits into what we're doing right here. On Monday, I announced a new training program that I'm offering called Mastering the Art of Delivery. Art of delivery is all about taking basic tapping fundamentals and using them in a way where you are getting the most out of your tapping every single time. It's the reason why when I work with clients, I'll have a client say, oh my gosh, it's like you're inside my head. You know what you're, what I'm thinking as I'm working through this thing. Part of that comes from experience, but most of that comes from the way that I approach a tapping session and the way that I use the tool. And art of delivery isn't just about when we're working with other people, but it's also when we're tapping on our own. I use these tools all of the time. So if you found these healing fundamentals useful and you really want to deep dive and get more out of your tapping, I'd encourage you to go to tappingartofdelivery.com. That's tappingartofdelivery.com. And if you use the bonus code podcast, you are going to get half off the live training. I'm doing it three different weekends, so you can find a time that works for you. And for those of you who are in Asia, Australia, and New Zealand, I'm actually doing one of the weekends at a time that is convenient to you, so you are not up in the middle of the night. Tappingartofdelivery.com, and remember, use the coupon code PODCAST for 50% off. Hi everyone, this is Gene Montrestelli, and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 469, originally aired July 8th, 2020. Hi everyone, I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today we are going to spend some time talking about the difference between the intentions we have and the actions we take and how those two things get tangled up and how we end up judging ourselves harshly because of the way that we approach those two things. Now, this comes up a lot, most often in conversations with my clients, when they are looking at the choices that they are making and they're comparing them to the choices of the people around them. And when we're doing an evaluation of ourself versus an evaluation of the people around us, we do a really uncharitable comparison because we're not doing a similarity comparison. We're comparing two different things. What we're doing is we are comparing not our actions, but how we felt when we made the action versus the action someone else takes, where we are taking out how they feel completely out of context, or we assume that they are doing something in a confident way. And one of my favorite things to have realized as I was kind of figuring out my place in the world as I was trying to navigate my own social anxiety was recognizing the fact that there was no difference between acting brave and being brave. And the way that this came up as I was starting to really wrestle with my social anxiety and and start to get it under control and really being honest with myself, I started sharing my experience with my friends because that's what we do when we struggle. We like to share it with the people around us. And I would share my experience of being overwhelmed and not knowing what to say and feeling completely out of place. And the thing that I heard over and over again from my friends and my loved ones was, I never would have guessed. You move through the world so easily. You always look so confident. I never would have guessed that you are afraid. And so if I am in a situation where I am dealing with this crippling social anxiety, where I am trying to figure out a way to flee a social situation so I don't have to interact with anyone... And everyone around me assumes that I'm completely in control and I'm completely comfortable. The inverse is true as we are evaluating the people around us. That it's really easy for us to put ourselves down because we recognize the fear and insecurity. And we also recognize the outcome that we are hoping for which isn't necessarily the outcome we get. And so when I see someone else take an action, I assume the outcome they've gotten is the outcome they were shooting for. When I do something and I have a higher goal in mind, I'm judging it against my hopes, not against the outcome. 
And I'll give you a tangible example of this. Years and years and years ago, I was in Costa Rica, and I was very, very early on in my tapping experience, like just learning how to tap. And because of that, I was in that super zealot stage where anybody and everybody I could share tapping with, I was sharing tapping with. So I'm sitting in this coffee shop in this little mountain town in Costa Rica, and, and I'm reading and I'm having a cup of coffee, and four other Americans come into the coffee shop, and they sit down at the table next to me, and we just start chatting with each other and just kind of sharing stories and figuring out what we've liked so that we can try different things. And the group mentioned that they had gone zip lining the day before, which was something I was planning on doing. And so I was asking about their experience and the company they'd used and if that was a good idea. And they were glowing about how wonderful it was, except one of the men mentioned the fact that he had hurt his back ziplining. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing. Can I show you this really weird thing that'll help you out with your pain? And the guy was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So we did a round of tapping. And before we did the round of tapping, we rated the sud scale zero to 10. He said, oh, it was about a six. And so we do a couple of rounds of tapping on this thing. And I ask him, so what's your level of pain now? And he goes, it's a four. And in my head, I'm like, oh, no, this failed. It's only at a four. And his three friends go, whoa, that's amazing. Because we had just done 90 seconds of tapping and 33% of his pain had gone away, which is really amazing. But because I had the expectation that I was going to get this perfect outcome of getting it down to a zero because tapping at that point in my life was only effective if we got rid of everything, my expectations impacted the outcome and the action that was taken and how I evaluated all of that. And so all of this is to say that as we are navigating the day, we are consistently comparing ourselves to the outcomes other people have, and we assume their intention is matching their outcome, and we assume that they're doing everything with confidence, and we're comparing that against ourselves, where we hear our insecurities, we hear the goals that we're not reaching, we hear all of those things inside of our head, and so we're judging ourselves harshly. So we get the opportunity to beat ourselves up twice. First, we're beating ourselves up because we don't measure up to the people around us because we have a misunderstanding of how they are experiencing the world. And we get to beat ourselves up because we're not doing everything perfectly with perfect intention, perfect confidence, and meeting our goals every single time. So to that end, we're just going to do some really simple tapping here that is going to help you to move to a place where it is significantly easier to navigate this in big and small ways, where we are judging ourselves in a more gentle way against others, and we're judging ourselves in a more gentle way against our intentions and against what other people are experiencing. So to begin with, what I want you to do is I just want you to tap on the side of the hand, take a nice big deep breath. Take another nice big deep breath for me. And just move from tapping point to tapping point, repeating after me. I recognize the fact that I want things to work out well. That I want to live up to my expectations. That I want to be successful. And there is a part of me that is constantly judging me against my expectations. Constantly pushing me forward. Constantly wanting better. When I don't meet my expectations... This part judges me. When I don't act with pure confidence, this part judges me. It's judging me because it wants better for me. It's judging me because it wants to keep pushing me forward.
It's judging me because it wants me to be successful. The problem is it's beating me up. Beating me up in a way that is unuseful. Beating me up in a way that is unkind. It's not seeing me for who I am. It's not seeing me for what I'm achieving. It's judging me off of a sense of perfection. And I'm glad it wants me to be better. I'm glad it wants me to move forward. I'm glad it wants me to be successful. But it's not being useful. Beating myself up in this way is not a good motivator. Beating myself up in this way actually makes it harder. Beating myself up in this way prevents me from taking action. Beating myself up in this way makes it harder for myself. I give myself permission to know that I don't have to beat myself up. I give myself permission to know that I can move to do better without having to scold myself. I recognize the fact that I can appreciate the success that I have even if it's not the total success I want at this time. My success is not an all or nothing proposition. I can move from success to success Building something that is bigger. Building something that is more confident. As my life evolves and grows. I'm glad there's a part of me that wants me to work harder. I'm glad there's a part of me that wants to have more success. And I can have that success without being perfect. And I can have that success without being 100% confident in every action that I take. And I can have that success as I ease into moving forward. It's good for me to evaluate myself. It's good for me to evaluate my actions. I don't need to evaluate every part of my life to a level of perfection. In order to move forward in a successful way. Nice deep breath. I think
think it's really important that we recognize these places that we're being unkind and unjust with ourselves. I have a friend of mine that whenever I say something self-deprecating, he'll turn to me and he'll say, Gene, you're not being very charitable with yourself. And it's interesting that we don't feel bad about extending charity towards someone else, but it feels like we're letting ourselves down if we extend any sort of charity or kindness towards ourselves, because we think if we do that, we're going to turn into giant sloths who are going to stop moving forward. And that's just not the case. And so this is an opportunity for us to move forward in a gentle, simple way. I'd love to hear your experience in tapping on this and being gentle with yourself and recognizing how unjust you're being in the way that you're evaluating yourself and how that impacts you over the course of the day. Recently, I was tapping on this in the morning. Every single morning I do some tapping. In addition to tapping on my to-do list of the day, I always just pick a theme of the day. I have a little journal where I just note down what is the theme of the day. And I just spent some time tapping on being more charitable towards myself. And one of the consequences of that was I just took more consistent action over the course of the morning because I was less afraid about being perfect and less afraid of standing in total power when I was taking that action. And in doing that, I built momentum. In doing that, I built confidence. Over the course of the morning, I was more and more successful with everything that I was doing. If you know someone in your life who could use this conversation, use this tapping, please pass it along. The easiest and most common way someone finds a new piece of content is from the recommendation of a friend. And if you pass this along to someone else, it would make their day better. They might take some more confident action, which is going to help all of us. I know that sounds super cheesy, but I really truly believe that, that if we are all just a tad healthier, then we are going to act in a way that is kinder towards ourselves and everyone around us. And it's really the highest compliment you can pay me in my work is to recommend it to a friend. So please, 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 if you can pass it along. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the podcast and podcasting parlance. Subscribe is always free. It's not a payment like Netflix. You can listen to the podcast in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, Deezer, Radio.com. You can actually get it on your Amazon A-L-E-X-A. Anywhere that you can find audio, just look for Tapping Q&A. If you go to tappingpodcast.com, there are links that make it super, super easy for you to subscribe. And if you subscribe every single time there's a new episode, it will show up in your smart device of choice. Click subscribe, click follow, whatever the button is in that device. If you have a question or comment, please let me know. I can always be reached, gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com. Or if you're at tappingqna.com, just click on that contact link. I get all of the messages. They don't go to a VA. I love hearing from you, questions that you have, topics that we need to cover, people we need to interview over the course of... The last couple of weeks have done some really amazing interviews, and I keep rejuggling the order that I'm sharing the interviews because the, each one that I do just seems to be a little better than the previous, um, and there's just some amazing stuff over the course of the next couple of months I'm going to share, but I'd love to hear your recommendations just so that we can continue to hear a diverse, amazing set of voices that are really going to help us to move forward in powerful ways. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrostelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Monterostelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Monterostelli and Tapping Q&A.